Well, let's do one more question and then we'll we'll wrap it up. Okay. Um, thank you, Ted. I had a good one here. Hang on. Yeah, so the question from Liz, I'm stuck on how to identify hubs in the virtual space for my topic area. She says leadership slash career coaching. I've done a number of online summits that have been amazing, but it's only once registration opens, I realize the speakers weren't quite hubs, i.e. not a lot of signups. I have other life responsibilities. So uh, I only have a couple of hours each month to build relationships, meaning I can't do a lot of coffee chats or joint coll collabs to test the waters. And it feels ickier than ick to ask someone whether they have an engaged following. <laughs> Can the hub approach still work for me? Yes, is the short answer. And of course, once a quarter, we do the hub marketing program. It's in the fourth quarter of the year. So I mean, October, November, December. Uh, and if you go to marketingforhippies.com slash steps, step five is all my content in hub marketing. It's free for now. It will become paid a bunch of it later, but enjoy it while you got it. Sorry, Ted, can I just jump in? I think you said once a quarter, but I think you meant one quarter per year. That's what I meant. Thank once you. Once a yeah. year, yeah. Uh, well, right. Anyway, once a quarter, we do a different semester. The fourth semester, the fourth quarter is hub marketing. Okay. So the first thing is, I think this is actually probably more of a niching issue than a um, hub issue. Uh, just based on what I heard there, like leadership, career stuff, was it? Leadership, career coaching. Yeah, so that's that's very broad. So we're hearing about the boat, but not the journey. I just don't know enough about who this is. So the niche may be clear, but based on that, that's the problem, is um, trying to get together a bunch of people to be hubs for this is, is um, going to be tough and not that compelling. Part of the reason summits don't fill is because the promotion is bad. Part of it is just the topic is very generic. I can't even tell you how many times I've been approached to be in a summit that's like the conscious leadership heart-based business summit. I've seen that man 20 years ago. That was fresh. It is just not fresh at all anymore. Yeah. So if it's like a leadership online summit around leadership, around career, around the combination of it, we've just seen it. We've heard it. It's generic. I don't get it. So that it may be the problem. Okay, but let's just say there is some niche that isn't being testified to here around that's very clear and specific. And Okay, so then you've got these hubs. Well, and it feels icky to say how big is your following and, and um, are they engaged and all this. Yeah, I understand. Um, would I do that myself? I probably wouldn't, but there's a lot you can learn. I mean, you can just check them out on social media and see how engaged their following is there, see how many people have there. There's a lot that's publicly available, how big their email list is, what the open rate is. I don't know if it's any of our business uh, to even ask, but uh, I, I can't imagine myself asking. But here's here's something. So one, you want to pick right. You want to pick people who uh, have something interesting, compelling, unique to say that people would look at the summit list and like, oh, I want to see that talk. So you got to curate really well, number one. Number two, yeah, pick people with a good following. Uh, uh, and number three, that you've got to be very clear on the deal. Is like, look, would you like to be a part of this summit? Here's what is asked of you. You need to send out at least one solo email to your email list. You need to make three social media posts, etc. And this is for real. And like these things have to happen before the summit or something. Like, by this date and if not you're cut i don't know what it is but there just has to be a very clear arrangement that it's like this isn't for freeloaders and look we're all going to win if we do this all of us will grow our lists all of us will get more people but if you're coming on this because it's just a free interview thing no now that may also limit the kind of hubs that you get because some of the bigger hubs just too busy like no i'm not interested in you know i i, I don't have the selfish you know, interest to do it and I'm, I'm too maxed out. So you're probably looking for people sort of in the middle. They're up and comers, but they do have enough of a following. I mean, it's tough, but then you also want to make it very easy for them to promote this thing. 
you want to, here's the pre-written swipe copy. Here's the social media post. And one thing that I really recommend is you get, you set a, a half hour Zoom call with each of them. And you talk to them, A, to get to know them, but also to just map out their promotional schedule. Say, so here's all the ways and, and it's, you know, in the lead up to it that you could be promoting. Here's 20 things you could do in this order. Which ones do you, would you like to do on which dates? And let's just get that in. Uh, Danny any one of my colleagues, is brilliant with this. Um, and it's funny because I was uh, uh, Lisa Bloom. It is the storytelling thing. I've been promoting her pretty heavy. And I, I got sent all this stuff. I got emailed this stuff. And I reached out to Danny Bermont, who's Danny's um, affiliate leader guy. And I just said, I said, Danny, can we set a call to go over the schedule? I'm just so maxed out. I'm so overwhelmed. Can we just get on Zoom and can we go over it together? Because I just knew I was too maxed out. And he did. So we took half an hour. We went through this schedule. I said, like, all oh, right, okay. So I can send a full email here. I can do a PS here. I can, you know. And we just went through it like that. And it was wonderful. It just it helped me so much. So we want to make it very easy for them to spread the word. We don't want to make it burdensome. And yes, if people don't spread the word, you don't invite them back next year. And if somebody does and they get a lot of people there, you know, through their affiliate link, thank you so much. Would you like to be there next year? It's just good to make sure the deal is clear. I'm like, hey, there's no pressure to say yes to this at all. I've got a big list. Um, but, and this is what I'm asking. And if you can't, I no hard feelings at all. I get it. You may just be too busy. I mean, here's what I'll do to make it as easy as possible. But we're looking for people who are also going to contribute in that way. It may not be a good fit right now. Because uh, otherwise, it's um, if we don't have a very clear agreement about that, you can't hold anyone's feet to the fire. They didn't say yes to that. They just said yes to being interviewed. I mean, there was a woman who we were on a call together, and she's like, oh, would you like to be on my show? And I said, sure. And they sent a voice message like, so we do an affiliate thing where, you know, if they sign up with you after, like, you come, you know, the, we have some deals. I'm, I was sort of a little, eh, that wasn't what I thought it was. But, but it's fair enough. It's her business. So I'll just think through, okay, is there anything I could think of? I don't know what that would be. And maybe we'll do an ebook, you know, and I'll just give her 50% or 100% of the profits on the ebook, knowing that they'll get on my list. I don't know what the, the deal will be, but she's, it's completely within her rights to ask. And it's within my rights to say, no, that's not a fit. It just sounds like there probably weren't clear enough agreements around it. And also, you may be too maxed out, but this is sometimes where you hire somebody to be like, can you be the liaison to all the summit speakers? And then you come up with a checklist and you send them this email. Can you set up the Zoom call, walk them through the promotional calendar? Can you ask them, how can we help? You know, uh, do you need anything? Can you be encouraging them? This is a big thing, by the way. If um, if you, you're tracking the affiliate stuff, man, the first order that comes in from that person they should be getting an email saying, hey, somebody signed up because of you. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, cheering them on and encouraging them because that will encourage them to do more. And you send emails to everyone who's a part of it and saying, hey, everybody, we just had 100 people signed up. I know that, you know, um, I'm just so grateful to everyone who spread the word. It's amazing. I can't believe we got 100 people. out. Hey, we're at 200. Hey, we're at 1,000. Can you believe it? Here's the collective result we've been doing. Not long emails. But just, you know, the cheering on and the gratitude um, it goes a long way. And especially if the topic is one that everybody on that summit cares about. If it's sort of a loose, vague theme, leadership, career stuff, they probably don't care that much. But this is also where the summit could get more interesting because maybe you um, there's a bigger why. There's a bigger um, theme around it, around, let's say, um, sticking it to the man. Maybe this is a kind of anti-capitalist crowd, right? And so then everybody actually wants this general message around um, leaving the corporate world and escaping cubicle nation, as Pamela Slim wrote about. Maybe that's what they're passionate about. Well, great. This summit will help them get that message into the world. Um. And then they want to promote it because it's not just promoting a, a general topic, but it's like, oh, it's promoting this message, this theme, this idea, this point of view that I also share, that I see is needed in the world. And so I want to get it out there. Um, I was trying to think of like a real example. But let's just say you were, um, 
you taught the keto keto diet and you're really into it, man, the keto diet saved my life and, and what a miracle it's been. And then there's a keto summit and you're being interviewed on it. Well, you might just be passionate to share the summit. It's like, oh my God, everybody, you know that keto diet I won't shut up about. There's a summit on it. And oh my God, the most amazing speakers and check this out. You know, all these other people, they do stuff I don't do too. They talk about different elements of it and you should go. So is it a topic that just you care about or are they all so passionate about it? Can you find an angle on it, a, a way of talking about it that um, they would be on board with and say, oh, that's a real, that's a deeper cut. Not just a nutrition workshop, but we're doing a traditional ancestral diet, you know, summit or workshop. Suddenly it's like, oh, this is more um, everybody who's speaking at the workshop or speaking in the summit more excited to share it because they share the bigger purpose of it. Uh, any thoughts from you, Betty? That was great. No, uh, I don't think so. Uh, let me just check that there wasn't anything you missed. I don't think so, because it was pretty thorough. Yeah, no, I think that was great, Ted. Thank you. <laughs>